Hey everybody and welcome back to Gal. In this first video of 2019, I'm showing you how to create that cool zoom in and zoom out effect. It's kind of like a lens distortion effect just using the built-in tools inside of Premiere Pro. So the stock video I used in this video is from Envato Elements. Now I've talked about Envato Elements before, but it's an awesome deal. You get unlimited templates, music, sound effects, photos, fonts, web templates, the list goes on, they keep adding stuff. And this video is not sponsored by Envato Elements, but I do make a small commission if you guys click on my link in the description box below and decide to get it for yourself. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into Premiere Pro and I'll show you how to create this awesome zoom in lens distortion effect. All right, so once again, this is the final effect here that I will play for you in my timeline. So as you see, it is the stock video from Envato Elements. It kind of has the distortion zoom and a whoosh sound effect. And then it zooms back out into the forest. And then again, it zooms in and zooms out on an insect in the forest. So let's break down how I created this effect. So I'm gonna close the sequence. And here in this demo sequence, I have the three video clips without an effect on them. The first thing I'm gonna do is not apply the effects directly to the clip itself. And I will explain and you will see why this is important later on in the tutorial. But what I'm going to do is create an adjustment layer that I'm going to apply the effects to. So to do that, you're gonna go down to the project panel here and select new item and go to adjustment layer and hit okay. Then you're going to drag this adjustment layer onto the first clip and then just click on the end of this adjustment layer and drag it to meet the exact duration of this forest clip below. Now I'm going to apply two effects to this adjustment layer. The first one is lens distortion. And this exists underneath the built-in distort folder. And I have a lot of effects installed here, so I'm just gonna close up some of these. But under distort, this is lens distortion. So make sure that your adjustment layer is selected and double click to apply it. Now I'm also going to search for transform and I'm going to double click to apply it as well. It is also under the distort folder. So double click to apply it. And now we have the lens distortion and the transform effect. Now let's first start with the lens distortion effect. Now what we wanna do is change the curvature of the lens. So it'll look like it's kind of zooming in down into the forest on top of the trees. So we don't want it to start from the very beginning because that'll be a very long and kind of drawn out zoom. So we want it to be towards the end here. So with this adjustment layer selected, kind of just guess here and let's say to select around this area. And I'm going to basically set a keyframe by clicking on this toggle animation. And then I'm just gonna move forward to the last frame and the way that you can do that is just by zooming in and using the arrow key, so the left arrow key to go back. So that's the last moment here of this shot. So what I wanna do is change this lens distortion. You can play around with it just by clicking and dragging to bend it to kind of see what it does. But I'm going to set it to minus 70 because I think that looks the best. See how it kind of warps it? So we're gonna use a combination of this plus scaling the image using the transform effect. So this is the first effect that we applied, which is great. Now, going back to this first keyframe, let's go ahead and go down to transform here, and we're going to animate the scale. So again, we wanna toggle animation, select that, then move forward towards the end, and let's say we want it to zoom in to 200. So that way, as it's distorting, it's zooming in at the same time. So let me play this back. So it kind of looks a little bit slow and kind of, kind of wonky, right? And there's not a lot of blur. So to fix this, let's change the shutter angle to be higher. So that way more blur will occur. So if we increase this to 360, which is the max for the shutter angle, you can see more blur occurs. And if you want to make this more smooth, you can just lasso and select these keyframes, control click or right click and go Bezier. 
and it just makes it more smooth. Let's do the same thing with the lens distortion. Let's lasso and select both of these, control click, Bezier. And now I want the distortion to occur a little bit before the zoom occurs. So rather than have them start at the exact same moment, I'm just going to drag this a few frames forward and I'm also going to make this a little bit quicker, so I'm going to move this a little bit forward as well to kind of stagger them. See how the lens distortion occurs before the zoom? I kind of want a little bit of that warpage to start just a tad bit before. So let's see how it looks. All right, it's starting to look a little bit better. Again, after it's zoomed in, we don't want it to linger too much, so I might just cut if I zoom in on the timeline. I want to end the clips here, so I'm just going to roll this edit back here so it ends exactly at that moment. Now when we get to the magic forest here, we want it to do the exact opposite. Rather than zoom in, we want it to zoom out. So once again, let's drag this adjustment layer on top of this clip and let's roll this edit back in. And again, we want to apply the transform effect to this. So double click to apply it. And then also let's search for lens distortion. And let's close this off. Double click to apply it. And now we have both of them here. And now at the very first frame of this clip, we're going to go to curvature and start it at negative 70, which is what we ended the last clip at for the curvature. Hit the keyframe. And then a few frames forward, we'll bring it down to zero again, so it's normalized. So it goes from being super warped out to zooming back out again. And we can adjust this. You can move this to be however many frames you want. If you really want to get particular, you can actually use the right arrow key to count the frames. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So right now we're at ten frames of zoom, which is, you know, pretty fast, which is fine. Um, some people would say it's, it's even too slow. Some people like super fast, like only like four frames. So the curvature there is good again. Once again, let's lasso select, control click and Bezier. Bam. Now let's do transform and we want it to zoom out from 200. So we want it to be a little bit less than 200 here. So let's say 190, it's scaled in and then we want it to scale out. But before we do that, remember we need to set the toggle animation keyframe. And then at this moment, we want it to be back down to 100. So let's select lasso and let's control click, Bezier, and there we go. If you want some of the warpage, whoops, let's go back to effect controls. Sometimes that happens, just make sure to select the layer again in the timeline and we're back. So here I want the distortion to occur just a tad bit before the zoom occurs. So just gonna move this one frame over like so. So it's kinda, you can kinda see some of that warpage happening. One more thing, don't forget about the blur from the shutter angle under transform. Once again, let's change this to 360. So you can see a little bit more blur happen. And now we can play it back to see how it looks. It's looking pretty good. And so after we play it back and we're liking how it looks to make the same effect happen into the spider, all we have to do is duplicate these adjustment layers and stack them. So for example, at this moment, we want it to zoom in, right? And here it zooms in. So all I have to do is take this, hit Alt Option, click and drag up and let go, and you duplicate that layer. Now I just need to pull this over to end at the end of the second clip here and drag this in, because the actual keyframing doesn't occur till later on in the clip, right? So see how I just duplicated that. And because it's an adjustment layer, it replicates the same exact motion, but on this new clip. Now we want this part to start zoomed in and zoom out just like the beginning of this clip. So all we have to do here is duplicate this adjustment layer by hitting Alt Option, click, drag, and release and voila, we have it duplicated. Then 
just drag this over to the beginning of this clip. And now if we play it back, you see that it zooms in, zooms in again, and zooms out just by duplicating and repositioning these adjustment layers. And this is the significance of using the adjustment layer because it allows you to easily duplicate and add the same effect to multiple clips in your timeline without having to re-keyframe and reposition all of those effects on each clip. And lastly, what I did was I added in a whooshing sound effect. So the actual sound effect that I used was the strong blow whoosh, which I got from Envato Elements. So I just searched for strong blow whoosh. And once you log in, you can download as many of these as you want, because remember you get unlimited assets with Envato Elements, you can download as many as you want. So if you don't, you don't have to purchase each individual one. So you would just play it here. You could try out different ones and just hit this download. And then you can choose a project for it to be for. So if you click on this, just hit add and download, and it'll automatically make a license for that particular project. So to place these, since I already have it here, I'm just going to drag and drop it here into the timeline. And you can see the audio waveform. So I just lined it up to when this began about here. And then just kind of line up the sound effect to match the movement. And so I would drag this out again, the same moment here. Just like that. And then of course I added some music for the final effect um, here. So you can see the music came from Envato Elements again. So it's a really easy effect to do. Um, if you're looking to create some cool lens distortion effects, I hope this gives you a cool introduction to how to use some of the cool distort effects that are just built into Premiere Pro. That way you don't have to go out and purchase an additional transition if you really just need one little thing that you can do with a few simple keyframes. So that's all for this video, everybody. I hope that you guys found it useful. Don't forget to subscribe as well as hit that notification bell so you're notified when I publish new videos on the channel. And also be sure to comment below if you guys want to learn something specifically. I really want to listen to you guys this year. If you have any special requests or anything, definitely check it out. And if you become a Patreon or a patron actually, patreon.com slash premier gal, you guys can get requests as well as templates that I design myself. So that's all for this video, you guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Spike. Tell the viewers to subscribe. Tell them to click the notification bell. Can you do it? I'll give you a treat. Good boy. Good boy.